What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're bringing back the follow along routines and we decided to start with a upper body routine for complete beginners. If you're new to calisthenics, this is the perfect routine for you. It's especially designed for those who cannot do a single pull up or a single dip yet, or can only do one to three of those. If you can already do more than three to five pull ups and dips, this routine is not for you. You can still do it and revisit the basic, but this might be way too easy. If you want a harder routine, please leave it in the comment section down below. For the rest of us, we'll be covering the essential movement patterns you need to do consistently to be able to move to more advanced calisthenics move in the future. I recommend you do this routine two to three times per week and make it progressively harder week to week. And don't worry, I will let you know how to do that during the video. But additionally, you have a free PDF down below where you are going to see the entire routine and its modification based on your level. You're going to need a pull-up bar, a deep bar, resistance bands, and if possible, a pair of gymnastic rings. This is not circuit training. I'm gonna be doing two sets of each exercise with you. That's gonna give us enough time to focus on the technique of each exercise. It's also gonna give me time to talk about the technique and certain progressions that I might not be showing on this routine. Please make sure you do some form of light cardio and some basic jump mobilization before this routine. And without further ado, it is practice time. Let's go. All right, family, we're gonna be dividing this routine into blocks. For block number one, we're gonna be doing two exercises to warm up our pulling muscles of our scapula and our pushing muscles of our scapula. The first one is gonna be for our pulling muscles. It's gonna be active to passive hang. Two variations here, if you are a complete, complete beginner that you haven't hang that much in your life, I recommend that you do it with feet assisted. I'm actually gonna be demonstrating it that way. If you already know this exercise, or if you've done it in the past, or you can hang comfortably, you do it with your feet basically floating, just hanging. When I grab the bar, I'm gonna face, give you my back so you can see what my scapula is doing. When I grab the bar about shoulder width, maybe a little bit wider, knuckles up towards the sky, arms fully straight, and relax into a passive hang. That means your arms are straight and your shoulders are getting towards your ears. They might touch or they might not. From here, we're gonna bring the shoulders down as much as we can. We hold for one second, and then we release back into passive hang. That is for one rep. Let's go for seven more. Three, make sure the arms are fully straight and the only movement is coming from the shoulder blades. Four, five, three more. Eight, let's hold it for five. Four, three, two, one, and release. So for that exercise, around eight to 12 reps, it is good. As always, I recommend that you start on the lower end and build up gradually over time. I'm gonna move on to the floor. We're gonna be doing a scapula push-ups. That one was for pulling muscles. Now we're gonna engage mostly the serratus anterior, which is responsible for protracting the scapula. We're gonna be moving in this plane right here. Scapula push-ups is gonna be the exercise. Two simple variations. The first one, if you know this exercise or if you've done it, you can do it on plank. We're gonna move on from retraction, bringing the shoulders back to protraction, pushing the ground away. Or if you are new to this exercise, I recommend that you do it on quadruped, which is the one that I'm gonna demonstrate. So hand shoulder widthish, a little bit wider is okay. Knees below the hips, no flexing and extending. Try to keep a neutral spine here. From here, depression, meaning that the shoulders go down towards your hips. You're gonna keep them there as much as possible and only bring them back, shoulder blades together, then protract, push the ground away. Hold for one second, that is for one. Let's go for seven more. Two. Three. Again, the arms are straight. It's a minor movement. Four from the shoulder blades. Five, three more. And I got a lot of range, so you move, your movement might look a bit more like this. That's totally fine. Six, it's a very small movement, actually. Seven. 
and eight. That's it for the specific warm up for the scapula. I just did one set, but as you build more work capacity, you can do two to three sets, but again, build up gradually. Let's move on to block number two. All right, family, block number two, we're gonna be doing two very important movements, which is gonna be the pull-up and the dip. Now, I do not consider these movements beginner, so we're gonna be using progressions for those. These are advanced movements that you need to build up gradually. The pull-up is a pulling, vertical pulling movement pattern, which is in this direction, and the dip is a pushing vertical movement pattern, which is in this direction. Again, we're gonna be using the right progression for those exercises. We're gonna be doing two sets of each. In the middle of those sets, I'm gonna just giving you some information on other progressions that I might not be showing right here as to the best approach to get these two movements. Let's begin with the pull-up. We're gonna be using band-assisted pull-up. How you wrap a band is you put it like this, one side goes through the inside, you loop it around, and then you close it. Then we move it to the middle of the bar. We're gonna put that band on your feet. One or two, doesn't really matter. You can jump, or if you have an elevation, you can use elevation. Wrap the bar about shoulder width, slightly wider, wider, well, whatever is more comfortable to you. From here, external rotation of the shoulders. We're gonna do the same movement that we did with the active passive hand. That's the initial movement. We depress the scapula, and you pull yourself up, hold for one second, and you release, extend the arms, keeping the shoulders down, and then release. That is for one, let's go for seven more. Down, up, down, relax. Six more. Four more. Let's get it. Two more. Deep press. Bring the elbow slightly back and release. Shoulders to ear. Last one. Press. Pull. Extend. Relax. And come down. When I rest for about one minute, let me catch my breath. For the next set, we're gonna be going for six reps. If the previous set was intense enough, you should be getting a little bit less reps, not too much. Like if you get 10 reps and then you can only do five, the first set was simply too much. You are better off doing something like eight, 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 rather than 10, six, four. Now, many of you might be wondering why I didn't include negative in this workout and why we're using bands. Band has its downsides, which we can leave it for another video. But if you are a complete, complete beginner that you cannot even do a single pull-up, doing negative, in my opinion, it's simply not the best approach. It's, it's like if you're new to bench pressing, you don't go to the gym and start doing like singles or negative with the bar. You actually choose a weight that you can handle and you improve the technique on that movement. You combine that with the other exercises, the pulling exercises that are gonna be doing it, and you're well on your way to your first pull-up. Now, if you can do one to three good pull-ups, you can add the negative, but that's for another video. Let's go for the second set. I'm gonna face my back so you see the movements of the scapula. Let's go for six reps at your own pace, with control, with good technique. Three, two, one, grab the bar, find your balance first. Depress the scapula, pull up, that is for one. Let's go for five more. And come down. Get this band out of the way. Let's rest a little bit. So, as I said, I want to I wanted to keep this video in reps and sets. If you are a complete beginner just starting out, two sets of each exercise, it's enough for you. So you can do simply the whole video. You can simply do it. That is enough for you. And just keep doing that for one month, two months, even three to four months. Whenever you feel ready, you're going to increase to three sets. And whenever you feel ready, you're gonna to increase to four sets. So that's the, be the first form of progression that I want you guys to do, is begin with two sets of each exercise, and then move on to four sets of each exercise, slowly and progressive. 
The next one is going to be the dip. Again, we're not gonna be doing negative because I believe that's more on the more beginner, not so complete beginner side of the equation. So we're gonna be using a band to understand the movement. Again, we're gonna go, go in for a reps. You're gonna loop it up just like we did for the pull-ups. Then you're gonna put it on the other side and you're gonna grab that side with your opposite hand. Jump into the deep bar, bend your legs, but don't cross your legs. Extend and rotate so the eye of the bicep is facing forward. Lean slightly forward, come down, forearms perpendicular as much as you can. Hold for one second and then push up. That is for one, let's go for seven more. Four, bring the shoulders back and down as you come down. Five, the shoulders are always pressing down through the entire movement. Six, two more. Seven, one more. Hold, and eight. Let's take a little break. On the next set, we're gonna be going for six reps. Again, for the dip, the most important thing is having those shoulders down throughout the entire movement. So as we bend the arms, the shoulders are always, always pressing down. When it comes to forward or back, as we lower down, we want to retract the scapula. So bring the shoulders back together. And as we push, you, we simply go back to neutral. But that opening of or retraction of the shoulder blades allows for a deeper stretch of the pecs, which is the main muscle that we're targeting. Catch my breath. Three, two, one, let's go for the second set. Wrap your band around. If that was too much, you can wrap it or tense it more. If that was too easy, you can tense it less. Let's go for six reps on top. Three, two, one, lower down, hold, push up, hold. That is for one, let's go for five more. Break. Again, two sets might be enough in all you need for now. As you get stronger, build it up to three and then build it up to four. I'm gonna dry myself and I'll see you for block number three. All right, family, for block number three, we have the horizontal patterns. That's gonna be the row for the pulling muscles and the push up for the pushing muscles. For the rows, we're gonna use gymnastic rings, but before we go there, I just wanna show you the limitations of a low bar because you might not have rings. Low bar is great if you can get the bar to your chest. Now, this is super easy to me, so okay, let's make it a little bit harder. I'm here, still doable. Now, if I wanna make it harder, it looks what happens. I'm pretty much stuck and I'm doing not a healthy position for the shoulder, no matter how much I try. You can elevate the feet here, but it's still very hard to limit. The benefits of the rings, which we're moving on right now, is the ability to adjust them and you basically have more freedom to play with the lever. For the rows, the more, uh, the less perpendicular to the floor you are, or the more perpendicular to the floor you are, the easier it is. The more parallel to the floor you are, the harder it is going to be. I recommend that you put something on your feet so you don't slide, although it's not necessary, but the more stability that you have, the better it's going to be. And the ring height, the upper portion of the ring around the lower abdomen or around your belly bottom is where I find the sweet spot that will work for a wide variety of ranges. So find your inclination, extend both arms in front of you. We're gonna be working with neutral grip just because we did pull-ups in prone grip and I like to have a mix of variations on the grips to not overuse the forearm muscles. So neutral grips means palms facing each other. First step, shoulders down and it's slightly retracted, not fully, just small activation on the scapula. You open the chest, so you extend the spine slightly, glutes are active, core is slightly active and then you pull with your elbows back Hold for one second, full retraction at the top, so shoulder blades together, then release. That is for one, let's go for seven more. With the ring to your nipples, to your chest. 
ice. Six, make sure the arms are fully, fully straight. Keep that activation on the scapula. Seven, I lost count, so let's do one more. One, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Release down and release. Only one set of those. We're gonna move on now to the push-up, which is gonna be the pushing horizontal movement pattern. I'm grabbing this box for elevation. For the push-up, I'm gonna keep it simple. The movement is this one. When we lower, we retract the scapula, so the shoulders go back. And as we push, we slightly protract to activate the serratus and entire scapula muscles. Shoulders are always, always pressing down. How we make the push-up easier? You can do it on your knees, but that's harder to scale. I like to use an elevation. It allows me to work on the full in the full body shape that I want to do on my push-ups and it allows us to lower and lower as you get stronger. I'm going to be demonstrating it here and that's it. Choose an elevation that you can go for 10 reps and let's get it. Hands, shoulder with this. Again, a little bit wider is what we tend to find more comfortable. Go back, be on your tiptoes, legs together, quads engaged, glutes engaged, don't pike but push the hips down. External rotate so the eye of the bicep is facing forward. From here, lower down, chest, bottom of the chest touches the box, shoulder blades squeeze back together, and you push, you slightly protract. That is for one, let's go for nine more. Lower down, push, down, three, four, five, six. Nine, last one, and 10. Again, if that's too easy, lower the elevation, or as you get stronger repeating the routine, lower the elevation. Once you're in the floor and you can do 10 reps, simply build your way up to 15 or even 20 reps. And again, two sets, build it up to four sets. That's it for this vlog. I'll see you on the next one. All right, family, vlog number four is gonna be on the floor. We're gonna build a strong core. I'm gonna be doing two exercises, one dynamic and one static, which I believe to be very, very fundamental for calisthenics. The first one is gonna be V-ups. We're gonna be working a little bit on compression. The second one is gonna be the elbow plank. Again, only one set. You can simply do one set. That's probably gonna be enough if you're just starting out. But again, build it up to three, top three sets. For V-ups, we lay down in a hollow body shape so instead of anteriorly tilting the pelvis, like this gap right here, we try to close it and we're gonna bring the knees towards our chest and our chest towards our knees. And then we come down. If that's too hard, the modification for this one is simply gonna be right here with your hands and you reduce a little bit the range of motion. I'm gonna demonstrate the other one just so you have it as a reference. We're gonna go for 10 reps. So lay down on your floor. Three, two, one. That's for one. Extend, let's go for nine more. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, last one, and ten. Release down. Next one is going to be the elbow plank, which is if you want to get good at calisthenics, you want to be eating planks for a very, very long time. It's going to condition your scapula, your core, and it's going to create that whole body shape that you see on most advanced calisthenics athletes. So for the elbow plank, two variations. The first one is simply going to be on our feet. It's going to be the hardest one in this case. And the easiest one is going to be on our knees. We want our scapulas protracted and depressed. We want posterior pelvic tilts or our glutes and abs are engaged and we want to push the hips down. We don't want to be up here. We also don't want to be right here and we don't want a broken scapula. So a solid base of support. I'm going to be holding it for as long as I feel like holding it, probably like around 20 to 30 seconds. Again, go to your knees. If you feel a better activation on your knees, there is no need to rush. And if you've never done an elbow plank like this, then you're better off doing it on your knees. You can always increase intensity. Reducing the intensity is not that easy. So one set of around 20 to 30 seconds. Forearms are about forearm distance apart from each other. Make a fist. Don't collapse in, but create external rotation. Extend the legs back. Heels together, quads engaged, glutes and abs engaged. Protract the press, hold for 20 seconds. Also 
so don't run way too much. Try to keep a neutral spine. The only thing that is pushing away is the elbow, so your scapula is protracted. And also don't shrug them in, but bring them down. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, stay with me. Two, one, and release. Again, for this one, I recommend that you take like a 30, 60 second break. Then you repeat the whole for two to three times. Again, you can start with one and build yourself up. I'll see you for the last vlog, which is gonna be the cool down. All right, family, I hope that was enough work for you. Again, you can increase reps, you can increase sets up to four or even five, or you can increase the exercise uh, variation. That's gonna make it so you can do this workout two to three times a week for a complete year, and you're still gonna be you're still gonna be making progress because you are focusing on the movements that actually work. With that being said, let's work on the cool down or less rest on the cooldown. We're gonna be doing two things, hanging and German hang. One is gonna be to open up our lats and to increase our grip strength, which is super important in calisthenics. The second one is gonna be mostly to reverse that motion and opening up mostly into the chest. So I want you to hang. You can use your feet for assistance. We're gonna be hanging for simply 30 seconds. So three, two, one, hang, and then relax. Try to stop the swinging as much as possible and keep a small tension, but don't be like in a hollow body shape, like just relax. Allow the shoulders to naturally go towards the ears. Maybe move around. For hangs, I recommend one to three sets at the end of your training and hanging as long as you possibly can. Your first goal should be 30 seconds. Your second goal should be one minute. And to really get good at calisthenics, you wanna be able to hang for two minutes like it's a breathe. So work on that. You can start with feet assisted and eventually work with your feet elevated. Focus on your breathing, relax the nervous system, and slowly release down. Next one is gonna be German hang, which is gonna be assisted on your feet. You can do it without assistance, but it's just too intense on the shoulders. The risk to reward ratio is too much. And for a complete beginner like yourself, totally bad idea. So grab the bar. The wider you go, the easier it's gonna be here. So try to start wide enough and eventually start to close that angle a little bit more. So from here, you're simply going to relax down. Maybe walk the feet back. And maybe this is where you feel it, that's totally fine. Try to find a position where you can relax. So here I'm not relaxed, I'm gonna go to a deeper range, putting my knees down. If you find that this is too much, you can find a lower bar, or you can, again, you can be on a squat. Find a level where you can relax, allow the chest to open, but it's not too intense. Focus on your breathing. Allow the chest to open, allow the shoulders to open and relax. You should also feel a stretch in your biceps. Maybe not, maybe yes. Slowly come back up. Keep your arms straight before you bend them. Allow the tension to release. Stand tall. And slowly you can begin to bend your arms. To finish off, we're gonna be doing a little bit of shaking. So start bouncing in place. Allow all that energy to release. No right or wrong. You're not looking stupid by doing this. <laughs> if anybody's looking, don't mind them. And allow yourself to simply go. Relax the muscle, one arm at a time. Maybe stop, just shake one arm. Shake the other arm. Swing side to side, allow the arms to touch wherever they wanna touch. And in three, two, one, stop in stillness. Gaze at about 45 degrees, soft gaze. Allow your arms to relax, allow your shoulders to relax. You can keep a soft gaze or you can simply close your eyes. Allow the effects of the practice to sink in. And allow this new vibration and you, this new energy to be with you. It is 
it is still amazed me till this day how movement can change our mindset and our emotions. We live too much in our heads and getting into our body is probably the quickest way to get out of there and see everything with a clearer mind with a more positive attitude. Whatever you did today, feel proud about it. Do not judge your practice. Just watch it, observe it, learn, and improve as you go. Slowly open your eyes. And there you go, family. This is a very beginner routine, but again, I, do, I did my best to give you as many modifications as possible and gave you a range of reps to work in, a range of, again, modifications of the exercise to work in, and a range of sets so you can increase volume of work over time. Again, I start with two times per week, with two sets, with the easiest variation. Once that's done for a period of time, increase to three sets on those variations, then increase to four sets on those variations, then increase the intensity in those exercises for four sets, and then go from two times per week to three times per week. You have a whole decade, years to progress. Obviously, this routine is for one, two to three years if you stay consistent. Again, down below, you're gonna find a PDF where we cover all the modifications and everything you need to know to make this workout work for you in case you don't want to do it with me again. With that being said, if you're looking for a program that will guide you step by step towards gaining full control of your own body weight, try our online SM Academy for free where we have three programs with variations and modifications so you can adapt it to your own unique fitness level. All that and way, way, way more our yoga programs and our balances programs with just one single subscription. And with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you want to see another routine, if you want to see a lower body routine with this intensity, if you want to see an upper body routine with this intensity, if you want to see muscle-ups, planches, whatever you want to see, let us know down below. We'll make it happen for you. And we'll see you all next time. Much love.